The story for today is Moonlight on the River by Deborah Kovacs. Pictures by William Shattuck. The moon was full and midnight high. Ben shook Will. It's time to go, he said. Will finished packing and threw the heavy bag over his shoulder. Moving silently so they wouldn't wake their parents, the brothers slipped outside. The night was filled with deep green smells and animal sounds. The air was as warm as a bath. There the sailboat waited. It tugged at its moorings, riding the rising tide. With the swish, a restless fish broke the river's calm surface. Hear that? said Will as they boarded the boat. Will tied a hook and a fishing line to the stern and watched as the hook dropped into the depths. You'll see, Ben, he said. The blues always bite when the moon is full. Soon they were sailing up the smooth ride river. A great blue heron shrieked farewell. Will manned the tiller. Ben held the sheets. The sail billowed under the light breeze. The little boat moved swiftly up the river's deepest channel. Ben watched nighttime shapes rise all about him. Everything looked different in the darkness, bigger, blacker, full of shadows. Ben blinked as his eyes played tricks. He edged closer to Will. In the night's velvet light, Will could scarcely see the break in the Spartina grass. The rushes seemed to loom larger, the branches to dip lower. Will grasped the tiller tightly, his palms damp with sweat. Was this the way in? At last they broke through, into the still cove. Will appeared over the side of the boat. He moved the stern line up and down. Ben dipped his hand in the cool water, stirring up tiny creatures that glowed with phosphorescence. The fish are here just like you said, whispered Ben. In the cove, the bluefish swam in a tight circle, their fins and tails lit by moon glow and fireflies. Will kept moving the line. For a long, still hour, nothing bit. Will looked up at the moon, now a tiny circle high in the sky. We can't stay here, he said. The tide's turning, and we've got to go downriver. Ben's head felt heavy. He sank beneath a blanket of coat and made his arms his pillow. I'll stay awake, said Will. Will guided the boat through the narrows and tacked south, heading for home. Alert, alone, he inhaled deeply. (sighs) Hadn't the night air changed? Did he smell rain? Suddenly, Will's breath was broken by a rise in the wind that raised the waves and wet the deck. Keep her steady, he thought. When they reached the open water, the wind was huge. The sail began to flap, moving crazily back and forth. Ben! called Will. Ben woke up, ready to help. He hauled the sheet. Will manned the tiller. Still, the water grew rougher. A chill rain fell, its sharp drops shattering on the deck. The boat heeled in the rising wind. Overboard went coat and book, socks and food. Breathing quickly, Ben watched Will. Will knew he must stay calm. We've got to get off the river, he shouted. Now the storm surrounded them. Through the darkness and churning water, through the mist and salty spray, Will saw another boat. It was much like theirs, except there was only one man on deck. He stood tall and steady, his arm pointing to starboard. Was he guiding them to an inlet? Let's head to starboard, called Will. In minutes, a safe code sheltered them. Ben dropped the anchor. Will tied the stern line to a tree. They huddled beneath the tarp, waiting for the storm to pass. Keep a lookout for that other boat, Will told Ben, but all they could see was rain and lightning, and all they could hear was thunder and the roar of the wind. Just before dawn, the waves rested at last. As Ben hauled the anchor, Will went ashore to untie the stern line. We've got to remember this spot, he thought. He wished he had a penknife to mark the big old beech tree, but there was no need for someone had been there before them. The boys sailed home in a steady breeze. Ben scanned the horizon and saw that they sailed alone. As Ben tied the boat to the mooring, the forgotten fishing line snapped with a strike. Will laughed as he hauled in a five-pound blue. The brothers crept up the lawn, Will carrying his prize. They crawled through their open bedroom window as the sky began to lighten. Shivering, they changed to warm pajamas and curled into their beds. When their mother came to wake them, she saw the fish on the bedroom floor. What were those boys up to? She wondered. Then she knew. 
for she was once a girl on the smooth, wide river. She smiled as she looked out at the calm water that had delivered her children home safely. The river was quiet now. It stretched beneath the daylight, sparkling with the memory of journeys past and the possibility of adventures yet to come. The End